What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another YouTube video showcasing more of the Pico CTF 2022 Capture the Flag. It is a new day for me, new t-shirt, you can probably tell, a new one o'clock in the morning opportunity to record. And uh, hey, without further ado, let's just go ahead and dive into it. I am here in my Kali Linux virtual machine. I do have a Sublime Text text editor open in case I end up needing it. I'm also using a Kali Linux terminal here. You can see I have created a directory CTF and Pico for... Uh, all the things that we're doing. But let's hop back over to our web browser where we are on page three, the Pico CTF 2022 game board. And we're moving on to a challenge in the cryptography category called Veneer or Visioneer. I don't know how to pronounce that and I consistently get it wrong every time. It's okay, please don't worry about it, whatever. It says, hey, can you decrypt this message? You can decrypt this message with a download link here using this key, Scilab. And we have this download link. So let's go ahead and grab that link address. I just right clicked and selected copy link address. I'm gonna alt tab over to my terminal, change directory into the cryptography category, make a directory for Vigneer, 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 however you say it, I'm sorry. Uh, and let's W get that file down. There we go. Now we have a cipher.txt file that is simply ASCII text. We could open that up in our sublime text text editor and we see this, thing very much looks like a flag kind of in the same format hey pico probably in lowercase letters and then ctf probably in uppercase letters with the curly braces with underscores to separate things but needless to say this is encrypted in some way uh given the name of the challenge we can assume that this is veneer and if folks aren't familiar with what that is let me just do a quick googling of the veneer cipher I'll zoom in here. The veneer cipher is a method of encrypting alphabetic text by using a series of interwoven Caesar ciphers based on the length of a keyword. It employs the form of a polyalphabetic substitution. So for those of you that have seen already in the previous videos, us work with stuff like ROT13, rotation cipher, uh, it's a Caesar cipher in that case, but a veneer cipher takes a Caesar cipher, which is sort of in like one dimension, right? Just a line here, but it makes it two dimension and that, okay, we're not just moving letters vertically, but also, sorry, not just moving letters horizontally, but vertically. And I'll show you that. Hey, let's dive back into the screen and uh, we'll look at the Wikipedia article here. They showcase this and explain a little bit more of the background, uh, where it all came from. There's a uh, kind of a good thing to know, a little fun fact and trivia, and that these are also referred to as the indecipherable cipher. That's just become sort of a token key phrase that is associated with the veneer cipher. And it's interesting because, hey, you can use the Kasiski test, right? As we mentioned and alluded to before, doing some of that frequency analysis, you might be able to determine what sort of things will be present in the plain text or original decoded message of this cipher text. Uh, scrolling down past the history section because we're not super interested in it, you can get into how the description is put together. In a Caesar cipher, each letter of the alphabet is shifted along some number of places. For example, in a Caesar cipher of shift 3, A becomes D, B becomes E, etc, etc. The veneer cipher has several Caesar ciphers in sequence with different shift values. And they have a picture of this here, uh, yeah, in which case you can see Cool, here is something shifted at the very, very top, but not shifted by anything. But if it were to end up being shifted by one position or another, or another, or another, or another, you can see sort of this grid and against the two dimensional setup of multiple renditions of a shift. And you'll kind of determine, okay, where in one letter could it map to the other location based off of its key being used to encrypt it with? Normally for a Caesar cipher or for those some rot rotation ciphers we were using, the shift or the key value was a single numeric, single integer, single value. But in this case, we actually use a legitimate key, a keyword, a, a, a message, a string of text. But it has to end up repeating it, repeat that message until it is the same length as the plain text. Here they're using a keyword lemon uh, against the message a plain text attack at dawn. And of course they expand it and repeat it and stretch it out to be equal to the same length. We saw this with the XOR cipher just as well. Sort of that technique, hey, let's just stretch and expand the key until it meets the same length criteria as our plain text. Now they use this kind of in that lookup table as they noticed up top here, where could this key correlate different letters uh, 
back to the plain text. Kind of a weird hip hop bebop around there. Um, you could do this with some, of course, math stuff. If you want to dig into that, again, you are more than welcome to. But uh, I'll note, hey, this is sort of something, uh, again, I would probably press the I believe button on and then use something like an online tool or code that could already do this for me. Uh, so if I were to go Google around for a Vignier cipher decoder, you'll notice, okay, decode FR, of course, always has something. We could try that, but I don't know if it'll maintain the underscores and things that we really use here. Forgive the advertisements for McDonald's on the side, <laughs> but we know this is the encrypted or encoded message, however you want to consider it, and then we'll slap that in there as what we want to decode for our ciphertext. You know they're going to be using a regular English language, and in this case, we actually know the key, so we don't have to do much with it. We just have to tell it, hey, this is what we'll end up using for our key. That was present on the original challenge prompt here. We know that value is Scilab. Let's go ahead and paste that in, and we could just then click the decrypt button. That will go ahead and give us the flag just that easy. However, of course, if we didn't know the key, we would have had to do some other things like, hey, trying to determine the frequency analysis, Kasiski's test, Friedman's test, etc. Or it could, hey, maybe brute force some things or just guess in, in some other ways. A lot of options, uh, but in this case, hey, we actually had a pretty easy job for us. We knew the key and that would be good enough. Uh, let's go see if there is Python code to be able to do that for us, because again, I'm not a huge fan of using just an online tool when we know, hey, we have a computer, it could figure that out just as well. Let me Google for Veneer Cipher Decoder in Python. Looks like Codrome, a couple results have this. Oh, GitHub Gist in Python 3, that might be worthwhile. Geeks for Geeks, of course, always coming with something. Uh, oh, and this actually just has some functions here that are pretty easy to work with. It does note though, there are limitations here with lowercase and capital letters. Does that not mean it itself? Uh, I wrote one that handles all default ASCII characters. Oh, and this is an individual commenting. Okay, this is not the original author. Yeah. Last active, oh, I, I thought it was last updated 15 days ago. I'm like, goodness, but no, last active for that user. Oh, this individual has <laughs> really, changing it up. Cool. They have a, a better implementation. Um, here they use a table, kind of the lookup as we used and referring to and reading to through Wikipedia. Hmm. They're using a graphical user interface with tkinter, not inside of code blocks, so that makes me hate it. And then they suddenly have code blocks in here? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Veneer Cypher for any Unicode text? Wow, this has a whole lot of comments. These other individuals are just piling in with new stuff to use here. Bravo, this fella, who is not referenced. <laughs> I don't know if they were alluding to someone else or that was just something that people say. I, I am naive and ignorant. Um, I am going to play with Flipper BW's rendition. However, it looks like it's using Python 2 because it's not using parentheses around the print statements, which looks pretty awful. Uh, universe, is that meant to be? Oh yeah, okay, so that is meant to be the alphabet and that you're using character representations for ASCII values or even numbers it looks like, or principal characters. I wonder what they're doing here. Let's, let's experiment with that one. I'll copy and paste it and we can create a simple um, veneer.py file. We're gonna have to clean this up, right, though, because it is, of course, ending up using a uh, Python 2 semantics, and we wanna remove all of those renditions of print that don't have parentheses. Uh, what I'll end up doing here is actually using regular expressions for a find and replace operation within Sublime Text. That way I can just say, hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and print anything that might follow it in spaces. I'll use a dot star as we used previously, but I'll actually use parentheses to capture that portion. And I'll use print with legitimate parentheses as the replacement with dollar sign one to refer to what was actually captured inside of that match. Hey, I wanted everything after a space after the word print. And now let's actually replace that print with the parentheses properly surrounding it and then what we captured originally right inside of it. I'll hit control alt enter to go ahead and make that change across all of the occurrences. 
And with that, we have this function. Um, is that decrypting here? I mean, they have a universe set up as a global variable type. I'm assuming is going to be D to decrypt and E to encrypt. Uh, let's just try it, I guess. Let's use our ciphertext as a string, which we can retrieve from the previous file. And then let's use our key, which will be scilab. And we'll print out. Uh, because, hey, I know this is going to print it out, but I also, returning it is just kind of more natural for a function. Uh, and let's use the IGN for the near function on our ciphertext with our key. And by default, it will pass in a type of D for decryption um, as that kind of optional parameter there. Let's see if it gets it. <laughs> I don't think it does. <laughs> Do I have that order wrong? No. Text and key... That, that, that's not what I was expecting. Type was equal to D, right? Like we got that right. What if I made it encrypt? Are these operations like backwards? No. <laughs> okay, it's doing other weird shenanigans. Um, that was its even better rendition, but yeah, what? What are they doing that with? All default ASCII strings. Um, let's try the original rendition here. <laughs> here we're, we're just kind of playing with all these functions that we might be able to use. Uh, decrypt is the one that we'll end up using, right, in this case. So let's pass in decrypt for the function that we want to use there. Ciphertext and key are the arguments that it would take. We could go ahead and just run this. That doesn't seem to get it right either. Um, and honestly, I'm just using, hey, the I believe button kind of clicking through here. Um, not what we were hoping though. I, and I didn't want to bother digging through the code and understanding what was happening. Just pressing the I believe button, as we mentioned. I have always kind of struggled and I'll, I'll struggled and I will admit in finding a veneer cipher solver in Python. I, I, did I write one for Katana? Did we have one for Katana? Show me the code guys. Give me, give me the code. They make a whole class and object and everything for this? Goodness. Now, let's let's move on to something. Uh, let's see if Katana has one. So if folks aren't familiar, um, Katana was a project that I had worked on with a great friend of mine, Caleb, um, many, many uh, years ago. In fact, I guess two years, three years ago. <laughs> uh, that, truthfully, I don't end up using or playing with all that much anymore. Um, it was meant to be something that would be able to... Um, automatically solve usual, easy, classic crypt, um, uh, capture the flag challenges. Okay, here, we know a veneer function is passed, uh, and that's going to end up encrypting. Do we have one that will decrypt just as well? Target raw, veneer key. I'm looking at this code one more time and trying to determine it. What? Isn't that encrypting, not decrypting? Let me read this. We are expecting it to be letters, numbers, and punctuation. It uses an uppercase key for determining valid characters and will return a ciphertext. Is the encryption going to still be the same as decryption, though, for veneer? It is a shift... Let's try it again. Hey, we were, th this video is longer than it had to be to begin with. So <laughs> we might as well, you know, uh, slap that in here. Yeah, it's not using anything speci specific or special. So we could probably just go ahead and use Vigneer, the function that's defined. And it would expect a plain text and a key but let's see if it just properly gets it. Oh, it needs string. It does, it does end up using string uh, uppercase for our valid carriers. It also wants it as bytes. So let's pass in a B prefix for the ciphertext. And let me disable build view because it's probably annoying seeing that over and over and over again. Ooh, so that got it. It just lost track of its lowercase um, values for the beginning there. I'm not too concerned about that. This this functionality was right um, 
allegedly, and it didn't matter, okay, plain text or cipher text, it's still going to end up being the right operation. Um, and that's that. That is code that you could very well use. Um, I don't know if it's going to maybe be a pain that you're worried about these lowercase letters, but in this case specifically, it's not. Um, I wonder if Pico would even sub like accept it with the capital letters there, and it did. Okay. So, hey, if, if there are other things like in the silly cryptography, classic like cipher technology or, and things that you might see in the crypto, <laughs> trying to talk, things that you can see in the cryptography category or just usual classic cheesy baby stuff uh, for more of the fundamentals to see, oh, whether you're doing an Affine cipher or an at bash cipher, or of course a Caesar cipher or things like the phonetic cipher or DNA ciphers, substitution with quip quip rail fence of course as we did that previously rot 47 rsa veneer cipher and xor uh, a lot of this code might be already a present for you in katana if you wanted to explore and play with it um but again katana was meant to be a kind of a quick automatic ctf solver for um the classic cookie cutter ctf challenges that we see all too often uh in fact i think we literally ended up writing it for previous renditions of pico ctf um because it was it would carve through things in a good way <laughs> it was it i don't know it, it still has its own flaws without a doubt. I don't use it all that often anymore because it doesn't know when it's the right time to stop if it can't find the flag and it'll just keep spiraling in many different directions. So when Katana can find a flag, it's awesome. And when Katana can't find a flag, it is not as awesome. Um, let's, let's waste some time and let's play with it if that's a okay. Uh, I'm gonna move, so hey, let's finish this by the way, uh, and let's get clone, I suppose, in our CTF directory. I'll just pull it down to retrieve all this stuff. And inside of that Katana directory, what you could really do is if you wanted to build a Docker instance or if you just wanted to set up and install stuff, I think you can run just python setup.py develop. Uh, there's the readme there. So uh, let's use tac tac user. Yeah, okay, so it'll pull down all the repositories, all the libraries, all the packages, all the modules that are needed for Katana. Uh, and truthfully, there are a lot. I don't even have Poplar tools. Uh, what did that need? I had a gross, hey, quick copy paste, install all this crap. Yeah, it's Poplar utils, maybe. Did I not already install that for some of the forensics videos? Yeah, I did. Is there something else in there? Some development things. Uh, and they suggest using a development environment, which makes sense. But <laughs> hey, I'm going to trust it. Let's just slap stuff in there and see what happens. Um, and again, if, if you're bored of this video at this point, you could totally turn it off. Uh, obviously, you don't feel like you have to stick around. We did get the flag. We have learned a little bit about the veneer cipher. But at this point, I'm just, I kind of want to, hey, maybe wipe the dust off a of katana and see if it would carve through this challenge or maybe some of the previous ones that we already worked through. Uh, let me add the disclaimer, right? We wrote katana in the case that it would try to solve those classic cheesy auto, um, baby capture the flag challenges. And we did that so the players that didn't want to deal with all of those that, like fluff at the very beginning of a capture the flag game could speed run through them very very easily and then get on to the more fun more interesting and more challenging stuff um, so a lot of the beginning fundamental challenges in pico ctf if it were a predictable thing that could have been hey maybe re like manipulated and played with it would be something that it would end up being able to rip through so uh, i'm going to go ahead and actually install for the user because if i could get it in the path that'd be kind of slick may as well let's see if it breaks by the way i'm sorry i didn't give a whole lot of coverage for these commands that i'm running uh in the readme of that github repository as you saw here this is kind of a quick hey getting started install all these dependencies probably more here than it needs to be if you want to set up a virtual environment you could but we are hey really recommended that you're using a later version of python uh, i think python 3.9 is where this stuff is going at this point um and let's see hopefully if this thing doesn't break oh z shell is going to try and auto complete me to move in that directory so that's annoying let's go into the temp directory and try and run katana oop already broke yeah and that actually is going to whine about the choices method problem uh choices method is an issue with um 
there's this was an open issue that I tried to pin it to a proper rendition of CMD2, and that's what it was. Let's try that. Oh, I had a typo there. Yeah, totally cool. Don't care about it. Install strictly this version of CMD2. And that should have been set in the um, requirements.txt or something. There we go. Okay, so it needs to know a flag format, uh, in which case we can tell it, I believe, tack F and Pico CTF as we were suggesting these or is the way that it could run uh, and we would check whether or not there were previous results uh, in a in a earlier rendition or running of katana uh, if i exit i don't need to enter anything interactively but i will want to add something in as an argument uh, but let me add tac tac force so it doesn't actually ask me for hey do you want to uh, delete results if they previously existed or not. Uh, and then we have to, after it knows the flag format, you have to give it the file that you want it to cut through and that you want it to use. Uh, but since we know that we want to use a specific unit, I think I have to tell it that. Yeah, so unit will need to specifically use something like what you want to have it do for this challenge. Automatically, it'll try to do all of these on its own and just determine what the flag is, but you would need to tell it what the key might be if there is a key that's going to end up being used here. Or you could tell it, hey, just do something in cryptography or do stuff specific to one thing or another uh, if you wanted to go in one specific direction. Uh, let me look for veneer. Is it? It's gotta be present here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so veneer, and can I give it like tac tac key? I'm trying to remember, it's been however many years since I've <laughs> even played with this thing. Uh, if I tell it, use a key of Scilab, will it know that I mean that for later renditions? Um, key equals Scilab? Mm. What did the documentation say on that? If I go back to my own code, this video is way too long. <laughs> this video has just turned into me playing around. Forgive me. Uh, I want to go into crypto. And I want to go into veneer. And it notes in the documentation here, you can supply a key argument to use for the veneer cipher operation. With the current implementation, if the key is not provided, the unit does not run. It will not attempt to brute force it. Uh, okay, so how do I end up... Um, actually supplying the key i have to remember do i still have a link to the docs i do ctf katana on readme perfect key <laughs> no how about arguments mm, it's gonna be a whole lot of things that it might already know how to do and not need to I'm trying to remember how to supply it. It straight up told me earlier when I was looking at the help. When I use hack H, it'll say, ooh, yeah. You run a specific target to use um, and a unit that you might want to run. Oh, with, with configuration. So key could equal something. If I were to tell it, go ahead and use veneer cipher. Yeah. So let's grab the target that we know is a file in my directory, my home directory, in the CTF folder, Pico cryptography. And it's not gonna wanna try and autocomplete because I had it a string. Let's use Vigneer completed uh, and the file was message.txt or cipher.txt, correct? So we want to tell it use a Vigneer cipher and we know that the key is equal to Scilab because it would be able to do that. And it's allegedly running, allegedly cruising through it, maybe doing it. Uh, oh, oh, it got an error from Quip Quip previous unit that I know has some issues, but it was able to go ahead and determine based off of the plain text strings present in the file based off of the veneer cipher it was able to determine the pico ctf flag that it needed here this is kind of a cheesy one because hey it didn't know what 
we, we did have to tell it what the key was. Um, but if we ended up brute forcing it or doing anything else, um, then it would still cruise through for us. So Katana is a fun thing to play with uh, again, but obviously buggy, obviously still broken, obviously still weirdy and wacko. But if anyone has any interest, it's a thing that exists. And yet now it's even still dying on some of the encoding things. So by no means a finished product. Uh, I should probably even archive this repository. It's so old and decrepit and ancient, but it was a fun project back in the day. So that's it. We spent 25 minutes on a Vigneer Cypher challenge, uh, and we shouldn't have. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, if you'd like just hanging out, having some fun with me, uh, please do all those YouTube algorithm things. You know, like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, all the stuff that helps the channel grow. Thanks so much, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. I love you. Take care.